Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I've always wanted to play hooky, but I only really did it one time in high school, and that was during senior ditch day. I still want to do it, but I don't go to school anymore. So I guess I have to go fishing in order to play hooky. I got a fishing hat, and I found one of my dad's old fishing poles. Oh wait, I don't see the hook on this. Well, I guess I can't play hooky now. Hooky is the episode where Spongebob and Patrick ride on fish hooks despite Mr. Krabs' warnings. This episode aired on February 23rd, 2001, according to the wiki, and is the first regular episode that aired by itself. Or did it? Actually, according to this website I found called tvschedule.zaptoit.com, this episode apparently aired on April 8th, 2000, even though Wikipedia states otherwise. Wait. Actually, this site says episode 16, Sandy's Rocket, and 17, Squeaky Boots, aired on September 4th, 1999, even though Wikipedia says September 17th, and episodes 24, The Chaperone, and 25, Employee of the Month, aired on October 2nd, 1999, while the Wikipedia says March 8th, 2000. What the f- I had no idea about this until I recently discovered how this site says the original air date, so why Wikipedia and the Spongebob Wiki have different air dates for these episodes is absolutely beyond me, and I will always hate them for f***ing tricking innocent people with the wrong air dates. Even I was fooled into thinking these episodes aired on these incorrect air dates. That's why high school teachers hate students going on Wikipedia for research. Also, I remember hearing a long time ago that Season 1 ran from May 1st, 1999 to April 8th, 2000. So for that reason alone, from now on, even though I stated those episodes aired on those incorrect air dates, I'm correcting Wikipedia. Sandy's Rocket and Squeaky Boots aired on September 4th, 1999, and The Chaperone and Employee of the Month aired on October 2nd, 1999, and Hookie aired on April 8th, 2000. I'm sorry. Additionally, this is the episode where Patrick puts a lot of fish hooks in his mouth, even though it's dangerous. To me, this is also one of the most notable episodes that truly takes advantage of the fact that the show takes place underwater by featuring stories that can't be used in shows like Danger Force. In this case, fishermen going fishing, which is a danger to sea creatures. With all that in mind, let's watch this episode and see how this fish hooks concept is used. So the episode starts up, and Mr. Krabs runs into the Krusty Krab trying to warn everybody about the hooks, but nobody listens to him or believes him. Wow, that is the calmest I've ever seen anybody about a near-death experience. Spongebob asks what he's talking about, and Mr. Krabs tells Spongebob about the fish hooks and how they grab fish and haul them way up to the surface, and they're met with either being cooked and eaten or being in a gift shop. Spongebob becomes scared, but Mr. Krabs says the hooks won't get him as long as he listens to Mr. Krabs. Later on, Patrick comes up to the window and convinces Spongebob to take a break so they can go to the carnival together. When they get to the carnival, they find nobody there at all. I wonder why. Spongebob realizes the carnival was just the hooks and tries to warn Patrick, but Patrick doesn't sense any danger. He starts eating all the free cheese until he actually gets pulled to the surface. Spongebob freaks out until Patrick floats back down. Patrick wants Spongebob to try and assures it'll be fine as long as he jumps up before they get up too high, and Patrick uses the loophole of riding a fish hook like a horse. Then Spongebob and Patrick start to get pulled up towards the surface, and then they jump off and fly down from the sky, leaving the fishermen upset. Hey man up fishermen, I went fishing before and lost my fair share of fish that were biting the hook too, you'll be fine. Meanwhile, back at the Krusty Krab, the customers are hating their food because Squidward was cooking it. Mr. Krabs comes in and Squidward tells him that Spongebob's not back from his break. Mr. Krabs didn't believe Spongebob was on a break at first, but when he emphasized this, Mr. Krabs went to sniff out Spongebob's laziness within 10,000 leagues. But can his nose smell laziness for up to 20,000 leagues? Mr. Krabs finds Spongebob and Patrick in the area with the hooks and sees Spongebob and Patrick getting hauled up to the surface. He didn't get there in time and was sad. Mr. Krabs, you saw them float back down last time. I think they'll come back down this time too. When they come back down, Mr. Krabs scolds Spongebob and Patrick for what they were doing, saying that even worse than gift shops, they could end up vacuum packed in a can of tuna waiting for the smell of mayonnaise. I don't blame them. I don't like mayonnaise either. 
Mr. Krabs has SpongeBob and Patrick make a sailor's promise that they'll never ride the hooks again, and when they do, they leave the area. The next day, SpongeBob goes off to work, but Patrick tries to convince SpongeBob to continue playing hooky. Patrick said Mr. Krabs was just a big dummy because they were perfectly fine playing on the hooks yesterday. Patrick leaves to go play on the hooks, and SpongeBob was tempted to ride too. Soon he found another hook and tried to resist, but rode it anyway. Soon he found the hook caught in his pants and raced off to the Krusty Krab. At the Krusty Krab, Mr. Krabs gave free water to Pearl and her friends. Hello, Mr. Krabs. Water is supposed to be free when served in a restaurant. Of course he can't see how pissed Pearl is. When Spongebob arrives, he tries to cover up the fact that he was playing on the hooks, but soon tearfully admitted that he did play on a hook. Since his hook was in his pants pretty deep, Spongebob had to take his pants off, but was hesitant because he was in front of Pearl and her friends. When he finally agreed to, his underwear was still hooked on. Interesting. Now he's embarrassed of being naked in front of others. Spongebob didn't want to take them off and was getting pulled up to the surface. Luckily, his underwear was ripped off and he was safe, but he was flung against a crusty crab and Pearl and her friends saw him naked. Then Squidward appeared with a fishing pole, revealing the whole thing was a plan by Mr. Krabs to teach Spongebob a lesson. Then Spongebob ran home embarrassed. Patrick then arrived back home vacuum packed in a can of tuna and the episode ends. So that was Hooky, and I think this is a pretty good episode. There are a lot of things I like about this episode, but before I get into them, I want to talk about a few things I found a little weird when I rewatched this recently. Not from the very last time I rewatched it, but three times before that last time. I'm very specific. Starting off, I didn't realize till recently that all the fish hooks were just together in the same place, and that there were so many of them so close to each other too. Obviously, I get there had to be a lot of hooks here for the story since Spongebob and Patrick ride a lot of hooks before Mr. Krabs scolds them, but it feels weird that they're so close to each other. Logically, that means the boats on the surface should be much closer to each other than they are shown to be, and there should be a lot more boats too. And with all the hooks and lines so close to each other, it's shocking none of those lines crossed. So overall, I find it kind of odd all these hooks are so close to each other. Additionally, it's also a little weird how Spongebob was embarrassed in taking his clothes off in front of Pearl and her friends, but in episode 18, Nature Pants, he had no problem taking off his pants in front of Patrick, Squidward, Sandy, and Gary. Sure, he took them off behind a piece of coral, but he still had no problem with taking his clothes off here and in front of a girl. Maybe it could have been because this time he was in front of strangers. Sure, he knew Pearl, but he didn't know her friends. But he's clearly older than Pearl and her friends, and he barely sees Pearl anyway, so I don't think it should matter that much. And why do these girls want to see a naked sponge so bad? Okay, I think I'm thinking too deeply into this, so I'm gonna move on. Going back to things I do like, I love Patrick eating the cheese off the hooks, and of course, this hilarious shot and Patrick's iconic line. There are some smaller bits I like too, like Squidward doing a wastebasket inspection, the hook touching Mr. Krabs' ass, and Patrick's line about Spongebob listening to either a big dummy or Patrick. And also, I didn't learn the meaning of that joke till recently, which also goes to show how clever the humor and writing has always been in the show. I really like the more dramatic tone used in some scenes of this episode. Mr. Krabs' warnings about the hook and the dramatic music showing the horrible fate of sea creatures getting caught by fishermen which again, is a great example of how this series takes advantage of the fact that it's underwater. When I was a kid, the parts that startled me the most was this part with the mayonnaise, and this part when Spongebob was in the can of tuna. Those parts are the most effective parts of the whole episode in my opinion. They're the most surprising and really helps with the tone while not going too far. The ending with Spongebob getting pulled up towards the surface is pretty suspenseful too. And it's always great when there's more tones than just lighthearted and funny. Don't get me wrong, humor is why people watch shows like this, but it's great when the episodes play with tone. Of course, Spongebob was going to be fine, but the fact that this near-death experience is involved with a fish hook, which is a totally realistic situation for sea creatures, just makes it that much more intense, and that much more of a relief when Spongebob survives. However, there were a couple times that I thought the punishment was taken a little too far, but I also know that was the point. Mr. Krabs warns Spongebob about the fish hooks, 
something that could potentially kill him. And SpongeBob ended up ignoring those warnings and wrote on them with Patrick. And it makes sense for SpongeBob to learn his lesson, and thus the audience as well. And it's also just a cartoon, and no one's gonna actually die, but you get my point. It's also a little odd Squidward is just abruptly at the Krusty Krab after he pulls off SpongeBob's underwear, but I refuse to analyze this any further. Now for a few fun facts about this episode. These two fishermen are played by John Laurie and Jim Jarmusch, and the live action scenes here are just archived footage from the 1991 series, Fishing with John. And some of the audio from this episode is used in a commercial for Spongebob fruit snacks when they first came out. I still remember that commercial when I was a kid. It was so goofy and charming and I just loved it. This episode is a great one. It's got a lot of funny moments, the undersea aspect with the fishermen is used pretty well here, and the message is effective, and it's applied in a way that's not being shoved down the audience's throats. And that's good too in my opinion. There are a few things I question about it, but even I will say that the show isn't perfect. There may not ever be a cartoon like Spongebob ever again, but I will admit it's not perfect. It also wouldn't be a fair critique if I only talked about the good things. And of course, I still liked it despite being critical. Hookie is a really good episode. I may have had a few nitpicks here and there, but that doesn't take away from the quality at all. It's funny, and it takes advantage of the fact the series takes place underwater, which is nice to see the show do every now and then. And all of that and more makes this a really enjoyable episode. But since I can't find any hooks, I guess I can't play hooky now and all I can do is just look at the fishing pole. Wait! The hook was there! Yes! Don't know how I didn't see it before, but now I found it. That means I can finally go fishing and play hooky. Ow! Ow, that hurt. Well... Now I'm not going fishing or playing hooky.